Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel and our Ephesians Bible study we're doing. Right now I'm going verse by verse through the first chapter. Uh, later on we'll, we'll start doing you know larger sections. Uh, but we're, currently we are in chapter 1, uh, verse 5. We're going to talk about uh, what it means to be predestined uh, for the adoption as sons. Now this is a tricky one. Uh, this is a fun one because it has the, the, the predestined word in there and we're going to dive into it. Uh, we won't spend tons of time on it, uh, but we are going to talk about that a little, little bit today. Let's go ahead and read the verse. Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 5, it says this. It says that God, uh, that in love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of of his will. And we're going to take that section by section. Um, um, so uh, anytime the word predestined is used, people get all out of whack. They start pulling their hair out. They start going crazy. Um, and uh, I, I had to be honest, you know, gr growing up in church, I, I, I obviously I didn't grow up a Calvinist. I, I, I grew up in, in uh, the charismatic, you know, tradition, uh, w which is an Arminian, you know, tradition that, 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 that emphasizes uh, free choice, choosing God. Um, and, uh, you know, this whole debate, the Calvinism versus Ar Arminianism, uh, is to me, I, I, it, 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 it's an important debate in the sense that, gosh, we're debating, you know, these really deep truths. But also to me, I think it's a time-wasting debate. Because the reality is uh, um, that, that, that God is absolutely sovereign. He knows everything. He is omniscient. He knows everything. And, and, but we also have free will. So that is a head scratcher. That will always be a head scratcher. And until we get to heaven, until we see God, until we are fully enlightened on that, uh, it will always be a mystery in this life. But the word of God is very clear about a lot of this. And it is very clear that we choose him. The, the Bible says that he chose us. And the Bible says that we choose him. It seems like a paradox. It seems like a contradiction. But in heaven, it is not a contradiction. That is, that is just clear, uh, clean logic to God. Um, and so let's, 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 let's go through the verse. It says that he, in love, he predestined us for adoption uh, as sons. Uh, um, does God know who is going to eventually choose him? Who is going to eventually be saved? Of course he does. He knows everything. He's outside of time, okay? So he's outside of the timeline that we experience. He knows what's going to happen in the culmination of events. Of course he does. Uh, but does that mean we don't have a choice? Uh, no, not at all. Um, I, I have a silly analogy, you know, uh, this is the one of the probably one of the most deep topics ever, but it's a really silly analogy. But but just 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 follow me for one second. Uh, humor me. Uh, imagine that I uh, am a team captain, okay? And, and there's there's a, a group of people, right? And I want every single person in that group on my team, right? We're 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 gonna go play a game against another team, and I've got a group of people, say twelve people in front of me, and, and I'm gonna pick which ones I want on my team. Okay, now, now as a captain, I want all of them on my team. You know, all of them have have unique gifts and skills and abilities. I want everybody. So one after the other, one through twelve, I go, hey, come on my team, come on my team, come on my team. So let, let's let's take the first the first two guys for example. Uh, the, the first guy, his name is Jason. The, the the next guy, his name is James. If your name is Jason, I'm sorry what, what I'm about to do to you right now. But uh, uh, let's say, hey Jason, I want you to be on my team. And Jason says, no, I'm good. You know, I don't feel like playing the game. I'm fine. Whatever. He refuses my offer. I go, okay. So I, I turn to James and I say, James, I want you on my team. James says, yes, and, and, and runs over to me. Okay. Then this is what happens. I, I, I say, hey, guys, I, I chose James. Now, could you imagine if someone would come to me and say, you chose James, but you didn't choose Jason? Well, of course I chose Jason. I, I, I gave him an invitation. He, he rejected it. Just because he rejected it didn't mean he wasn't chosen. I chose him, but he did not accept the invitation. And this is God. Uh, 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 Jason, Jason rejected the invitation. James accepted the invitation. But when James comes to me, how you know he literally could not have come on the team without me inviting him. 
I was in the position of power. I was the one who had all the cards. Uh, he could not be on my team unless I asked him to be on, on, on my team. You can't be saved unless God invites you, unless God calls you. It, you can't be saved on your own. You can't just go, eh, you know, uh, flick a switch and, and, and become saved. It is all, uh, uh, it is all based on God's power that we are saved. But it is our choice to uh, receive that salvation, to receive that gift. So is God all-powerful, all-knowing? Yes. Do we have a choice uh, to choose him? Absolutely. So, so the Bible says that we are predestined. Uh, uh, we are invited um, to adoption as sons. So, so know today, man, if you have, like, like I said in the last video when we were talking about verse 4, if you have any inkling in your heart, any stirring in your heart, man, that is God saying, I want you. I have chosen you. I, I love you. Uh, in, in Revelation 22, it says, it says that, he, that, that, that he, he wanted everyone to be able to drink from the living water. John 3.16 says, you know, uh, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, D.L. DL Moody said this, you know, someone asked him, he said, who's the elect and who's the non-elect? You know, in other words, who, who are the people who are going to go to heaven that God chose and who are the people that God didn't choose to go to heaven? And D.L. Moody used to, used to quip, he said, well, the whosoever wills are the elect. The whosoever wants are the non-elect. And that's it. You know, everyone, God wills that everyone be saved and everyone choose him. And that's your choice today. That's why it's so it is such a grave responsibility to represent Jesus in this world. C.S. Lewis put it this way. He said, every person you talk to will live forever. He said, they, a thousand years from now, they'll either be a, like something akin to an angel that you can't, they're so glorious, they're so wonderful that you can't even look at them in heaven, or they're, they're going to be someone so hideous, uh, so, so contorted, so, so wicked uh, that, 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 that they would give you nightmares. Every person, you, you will never talk to a normal person. Every person you have a conversation with today will live forever. They will either live with God forever or they will live separated from God forever. And, and every word we say to them, every action we make is, is in God's sovereign plan and process is helping them along to one of those destinations. So it's important how we treat people. It's important how we love people because we are, we are helping them in their choice to choose God or to reject God. And it, will it always be a mystery? You better believe it. But, but Jesus Christ here, and this is what's all loved about, about this. You know, they use the word predestination, which gets us all confused and everything. But then it just comes back so clearly to adoption as sons through who? Who? Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of times we get confused by these, these kind of uh, metaphysical mysteries or whatever. And, and, and what I love about Christianity, it cuts through all of that because we have a physical person who came and lived and died an actual life on earth, and his name is Jesus. If you're ever confused, you just go back to Jesus because he is real. He, he, is, he, is, he is not confusing at all. Man, he is clear and bright as day. He saved the world, and he is calling unto you today to accept that salvation. It says that it's through Jesus that we're adopted. You're adopted today into the family of God. Like we, like we talked about in the last video, on verse 4, that, that he chose us to be a part of his family, his community. You've been adopted. I mean, you have a father now. If you had a, if you had a father who mistreated you, you now have the, the ability to have a heavenly father who's adopted you. He loves you so much today. And know that you are choosing him or you are rejecting him. And it is by his mercy that he's calling you. So know that you're predestined today to be a, a son or a daughter of God through who? Jesus Christ. Jesus alone. You can't save yourself. Uh, you can't muster up your own righteousness. It is only through Jesus that you can be saved. Um, uh, comment today. You know, what, what are your thoughts? I know this is, this is uh, uh, like I said, when we use the word predestination, uh, you know, things start flying around. But, but share your thoughts in the comments today. Uh, share your perspective today. Uh, share, like I said, any prayer requests. Make sure you click subscribe so you can get the other videos that are coming on our Ephesians series and, and all the other amazing content that Celebration of Life is, is posting. We love you guys. God bless you. Have an amazing day. See you next time.